Yo, 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 before this video begins, I just want to give a disclaimer. This is something completely new. I haven't done this before. I'm going to be mixing and mastering in real time with very few cuts. This is something I'm currently working on for a client. It's an arrangement of the Beach Boys God Only Knows, and the arrangement is with John Legend and Y Music. Okay, let me clarify. I'm not working with John Legend. This is just a mock-up of his arrangement. Sorry for the confusion. So I'm going to be mixing and mastering in real time, kind of outlining my process, and we will go from there. Let's do it. Okay, so what I've done with this project so far is I've just taken all of the MIDI files that I had and bounced them into stems. Stems are another word for uh, different combinations of tracks put together. And right now we have seven stems, which we're gonna mix individually and then mix as a whole. So what I did for this is I, I bounced out the wins, which we're gonna put on the top. We're gonna put this in score order just because I find it easier to, to read that way. Then we've got the brass over here. We've got various pitch and unpitched percussion. We've got bass and guitar, piano, strings, and then room tone. I think I've talked about this in a different video, but I use room tone just because I find it helps glue the whole mix together. So room tone is literally just the, the ambience of a room. It sounds like this. It's really subtle, but um, when you have silences in mixes and you don't have room tone, you just have complete silence. And that would be unnatural in an orchestral setting. So put that in there. We don't have to worry about mixing that or anything. So I'm gonna play uh, just a segment of this so you get the idea. And then I'm just gonna work in real time. Um, I've never done anything like this before on this channel. So we'll see how it goes. And if you like it, you like the process and seeing the process, let me know and then I'll do more of stuff like this. I don't know if I mentioned this before, but this is an arrangement of God Only Knows. And uh, it's basically the same as the John Legend arrangement. This is for a client of mine who's gonna be singing on top of this. Uh, I added a couple little things here and there, but it's pretty much that arrangement. Here is the beginning. Etc. Um, I did some work to kind of fine tune. This is pretty much done as it is, but uh, I like bouncing it out in stems because I find I don't tweak the individual things as much. If you find yourself kind of being perfectionistic, uh, this is a nice way to prevent yourself from doing that. So let's just go in. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna work, and then I guess I'll talk about uh, what I'm doing while I'm doing it. I'm gonna start with the strings because these are pretty active. Okay, so I'm gonna um, automate some volume here just to help them be a little bit more expressive. And I'm actually gonna run through each track that way, I think, and do that.
let's roll that back a second. This has got to be louder. Okay, so I also just realized that I'm missing a track, uh, which I, ow, it's bright, which I bounced out before. So yeah, I had to bounce out. I was double tracking something, so I needed uh, the staccato strings in a different section. Okay. That should be right. bit early I think um Okay, so I think the automation sounded good. What I'm noticing about the strings is the the middle is kind of kind of hollow sounding, a little on the thin side. That that might just be my my VSTs or the way that I mixed it. Um, but we're gonna take care of that right now. So let's find a section. Here's what the automation looks by, like, by the way. And uh, I just do that to fine tune some of the dynamics. Sometimes. Uh, it works better when the sections are actually kind of like rolling up and down dynamically. Uh, okay, so let's give a listen to this. Yeah, it looks like it needed a really big boost. Yeah. Yeah, see, that's just too thin. Okay, and we'll just copy that over to the other strings. Um, maybe even a little bit of, maybe some really light compression on this just to help everything kind of round out. So when you're compressing orchestral instruments, you want to be pretty careful because um, this is not like a, it is a pop song, but because it's orchestra, you want to have a lot of dynamic range. You don't want to squash that. Yeah, basically I just kept the ratio really low, uh, one to three. 1.3 to 1 actually, and then um, pretty high threshold, so it's catching most of that, and uh, just barely kind of 
squashing a little bit. I'm not trying to cut any of the, the attacks or anything like that. I'm just trying to kind of round everything out a little bit. So we'll toss that over to here too. Um, and then let's just call that fifth string. Well, I'm gonna take a guess and say that all of these instruments are gonna need maybe just a little bit more reverb. So I'm actually gonna put it on the stereo out and just a little bit. Yeah, I think that sounds much better. Sounds like it's all in a room together. Um, okay, so let's move on to the brass. There's actually not too much brass, so I'm just gonna kind of trim up to see where there's activity and where there's not. Okay. That looks good. And... Okay, let's just work with the strings and the brass now. Too much reverb. Okay, so I'm noticing that the, the, the brass actually has a lot of reverb. It's the strings that don't. So I'm gonna take this off of the stereo so it doesn't affect the brass. I'm just gonna give it to the strings for now and see if that sounds better. Yeah. Yeah, the brass had way too much high end. You could hear hissing. Um, trumpet is too loud. I think the horn sounds about the right volume. just a little bit earlier. Brass player will be holding that note for a while. Okay, um, that sounds pretty good. And again, I'm just kind of touching things up because most of the work's been done already. Uh, okay, I'm also gonna color this because I'm gonna lose track real quick. Coloring is a great, a great way to keep your tracks organized if you can do it. Okay, I like coloring them by color the instruments, I find that's just easier for the most part, except for percussion, which I like to do in green. Room tone, we'll just do, I don't know, some shade of purple. Let's see if this looks like doo-doo. Yeah, it looks okay. Okay. Um, all right, let's move on to the winds. I'm just gonna do the same as I did before. I'm gonna kind of trim up the moments. Really, I started with the strings because the strings are the most active in this piece, probably, other than maybe piano. 
So everything else we're kind of touching up. Oops, don't want to do that. Okay. And I'm not going to touch any of this because the singer is actually going to be singing over this part. So even though it's silent, we still want it. A little, a little fading in between. And we'll grab all this. Okay. You want to fade these things up and down uh, rather than just having them start because sometimes you can get uh, clicks or pops if you don't. And you don't want that. Oh, what's this? I didn't know that was a shortcut. Oh, cool. You learn something new every day. All right. Let's just go with the winds. Now, I remember the clarinet, I think, is kind of honky in the beginning, if I remember right. Eh, actually, it's okay. I have a feeling with the winds, I'm going to need to bump it much higher than it is. So I'll, instead of just jacking the volume up, I'm actually going to add a gain. Um, you kind of want this volume to be somewhere around zero to begin with. This gain will basically help help us keep it there to begin with so that we have more um, flexibility with this. You actually have a lot of um, fine-tuning range when you're around zero. When you get up to six, you notice... Uh, or especially down here, the increments start getting greater. So it's harder to fine tune when you're anywhere except for zero. Also, I should just disclaim, I, I have not studied mixing. This is just stuff that I've kind of read on my own and learned through experience. Uh, there are plenty of great mixing tutorials that'll get more into specifics about this sort of thing. I'm just outlining more of my process, how I go about doing it. Okay. Okay, so now this is going to be tricky because the flute is way too loud, but we already have it in the stem. So if I wanted to, I could go back, bounce the flute out separately. Uh, but I'm going to see if I can salvage it just by doing a little bit of uh, little automation. think for our purposes that will work just fine. That's going to have to be louder. Let's bring this back up to zero. So generally brass is going to be the loudest, um, so you want to make sure that comes through. It would. This is a little bit different than traditional orchestra because in this arrangement there's a lot of solo instruments, but you just want to make sure your balance is correct. And if you're not sure about orchestral balance, just listen to a bunch of orchestral music and you'll start to get an idea. Um, pay attention to what's the loudest, how many instruments per section, you know, because a, a forte on a horn is different than a fun, forte on a, a trombone. So it's important to kind of study those sorts of things so you can make your mixes sound more realistic. Uh, I need to get a little bit more dynamics on the trumpet in this part. Okay. Jump 
over here now. Easy Tiger. Yeah, we need a crescendo in all these instruments, especially the strings here. Yeah, I'm hearing some weird things with the clarinet in this. I'm wondering if the highs are too high on this, maybe. I think that's it. Okay, pretty good. Okay, so we have strings, winds, and brass done. Let's just move right on to the vibes and miscellaneous and all of the uh, percussion and whatnot. So as usual, I'm gonna just trim the areas that need trimming. Actually, a lot of, a lot of vibes and stuff because this was at the request of the, uh, my client. Okay, so let's do vibes and miss. Uh, the miscellaneous is, I think there's harp and there's a triangle just kind of at the beginning and that's it. So let's have a listen. <laughs> Okay, vibe sounds good, I think, but the harp is a little loud at this spot. I know that my client likes vibraphone, so I'm trying to make sure it's prominent in the mix when it needs to be.
what the heck was that? Uh-oh, I think I heard an artifact. So it looks like the uh, the reverb carried over big time on this spot. So I'm gonna cut that and see if that helps. Okay, so there's a lot of reverb already on this, this track here. So I'm gonna cut this extra reverb I added. I think that did it. Yeah, what we might actually have to do is automate this reverb down. Um, yeah, that helps a lot. Sometimes staccato stuff can get lost when you have too much reverb. I might even try adding a little bit more at the end so the tail doesn't seem so abrupt. Yeah, I think that could work. Kinda breaking the rules of physics, but it's all good. Okay, and I think the vibraphone sounds okay. I'm gonna also fade this out. All right, now let's go on to bassing guitar, which is pretty sparse, but let's see if we can. Trimming and trimming and trimming. Looks good. And we'll fade here. While we're at it, let's just get the piano. Then we don't have to worry about doing any more trimming. Okay. You know, and just as a testament to what I was saying about room tone, um, I want to demonstrate that. So let me go to, let me just show the strings here. These are just the strings when they cut. Okay. Now let me put in the room tone. You hear that just hiss? That's what would happen in an acoustic space. Uh, especially when it's quiet, you'll really hear. Without that hiss, you just get. It would seem like things just coming in and out um, in no acoustic space. So I highly recommend room tone. I think it's really effective. I only started doing it recently. Okie dokies. So now let's do bass and guitar. I think it needs to be mixed a little bit more in some kind of room. So I'm gonna use Space Designer. I use that for a lot of convolution reverb and I use Valhalla for algorithmic. So algorithmic reverb is, um, it's mathematical, um, meaning it's based on 
a formula and that's how the reverb is generated. So you can get long tails or really long, like 100 second reverb tails with algorithmic. Whereas convolution is replication of an acoustic space. So it's more realistic. Um, the more convolution you have, the, the farther it seems to be in the room, I find. So we'll just do kind of space that this would probably be in. Let's do a medium space indoor and let's just do, uh, sure, let's do small concert hall. So here it was before. Yeah, that's way too dry. And let's just put in some of this. Yeah, like that's still too, I find that's still too, uh, too much of a tail. So let's do indoor space. Let's find, uh, let's do small reverb stage and see what happens. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I think that'll work. Yeah, here how it's kind of, it's farther back in the mix now, it sounds like it's not just right in your face. That really helps, um, helps it make, sound, make it sound more realistic for sure. Yeah, I'm also adding a little bit of high end here because I find that if you don't have any high end with the bass, uh, it just gets buried when you go to listen to it on small speakers like your iPhone. Um, it's really important to have that because, or at least for this plugin, my bass does not have much high end, so I have to kind of make up for it. But let's just make sure that didn't destroy the guitar. Yeah, see the guitar's a little too, so let's, let's meet it halfway. Okay, I'm pretty cool with the mix actually. Maybe a little bit. it was too much in the spot. Okay, and then last but not least, we have piano. Yeah, I think the same is gonna be true with piano. I think it needs to get buried a little bit more. So let's just plug in the same thing. Let's get an EQ ready, cause we'll probably need it. No, now I'm listening to it. I think actually even the vibes might need the same kind of thing. Uh, let's try that. Totally. Yeah, and I think this piano is probably gonna need a little compression. I like to put compression before reverb because if you don't, uh, it's gonna try and squash the reverb too and it's gonna wind up sounding a little bit unnatural. Um, why don't we try the same compression that we use for the strings for consistency's sake. Let's see if that helps. <laughs> Yeah, I think that works. Okay. I think I want it a little bit more dry sounding. Let's go negative.
Yeah, now you notice I'm kind of doing a lot of different things at once. Um, that's just the way that I work. I find you, you notice certain things as you're going. So I'll be doing EQ and I notice, oh, the strings are too loud here or the vibes need more reverb. Uh, it's just, it's kind of a fluid process. But I think this actually sounds pretty good. Um, another note, typically the rule of thumb is you really don't want to be boosting EQ. You'd rather be cutting it because when you boost, you're changing the volumes. Um, and when you're cutting, you can, I guess you could add a gain to kind of make up for what you cut. Um, I honestly don't follow that too strictly. Um, especially if you're doing minor tweaks like that, I don't think it makes a huge difference, but anybody who's a uh, mixing engineer in the comment section can, can roast me if they want. Uh, okay, so I think these all sound good. Um, let me just listen to how the room tone sounds and see if it could be boosted or should be cut. Yeah, it's too much. Maybe just one. Gotta bump down the piano a little bit here, I think. Okay, I think that's all sounding really good. Um, the last thing I would do is see if it's okay in terms of volume and make sure we're not clipping, of course. Um, but typically my setup for the mastering on the end looks like this. I'll have an EQ. Um, I'll have a compressor if necessary. If I want to add a little bit of um, saturation, I use this. It's called Klanghelm IVGI. It's like a tape emulator. And I'll usually put in an adaptive limiter at the end to see if I need any extra gain. Um, my out ceiling I usually have as negative 0.3 because I've been told that when you have MP3s, sometimes if you have it at zero, it'll actually wind up clipping anyway. So you want to have the out ceiling be just a little bit lower than zero. Okay, let's just check everything and make sure we're good to go. So I think the piano has too much of the bass end. Um, I'm actually gonna do the opposite of what I did. And I think I can actually maybe bump up the bass and guitar a little bit, maybe even give them a, a little bit more bass. Let's see. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, I think piano's got to go down a hair. I'm going to EQ just a little bit of the low end out of the room tone because I just don't want it to be affecting, be affected too much when I compress this. Yeah. Okay. All right, let's toss on a really light compressor and see what happens.
Now that's the loudest part of the piece, and I don't think we're, I don't even think we're near clipping. So I could probably boost this all. Uh, I'm gonna lower this in the volume so it doesn't hurt your ears, but. One more time. Let's see if we can get it a little closer. That's probably safe enough for me. Okay, and then let's just see if we want to do any kind of um, subjective tweaks here. See if we want to make anything higher or lower. This is a really subtle plug in here. Um, I'm gonna turn it on and off so you can hear the difference. It's really subtle, but it kind of glues everything together. It kind of emulates the way that uh, things used to be recorded, which is with tape. makes everything sound uh, just yeah just more glued together like as if they're recorded with the same device uh, let's just make sure we don't get any weird artifacts when we have this on <laughs> yeah. I think we're good to go I am happy with this mix um, I know this was a much longer video than I usually upload but I thought it'd be cool to outline this process for me. Um, if you like this kind of thing, just let me know because I'd be happy to do more of these. If you hated it, also let me know uh, and I won't do it ever again. Thank you guys for watching. If you have any further questions, let me know in the comments section and I'll answer them. Leave a like if you found this helpful. Subscribe for more music and shenanigans and I will see you in the next video.